race are you kidding me i just thought i'd ask no gym race isn't a tradition you might say real racing cars real tracks how fast will your car go oh an honest miles an hour clocked at around about 106 7. we probably have a great many young people watching our show tonight and for their benefit i'd like your opinion about fast driving on the highway do you think it's a good idea a good point i uh I used to fly around quite a bit, you know. I took a lot of unnecessary chances on the highways. And I started racing, and uh, now I drive on the highways, I'm uh, extra cautious. Because you know, no one knows what they're doing half the time. You don't know what this guy's going to do with that one. On a track, there are a lot of men who spend a lot of time developing rules and uh, ways of safety. And... Uh, I find myself being very, very cautious on the highway. I don't have the urge to to speed on the highway. One more question. Do you have any special advice for the young people who drive? Take it easy driving. The life you might say it might be mine. You know? <laughs> <laughs> quite a bit since 1955. Back in those days, this building to the right was the site of Competition Motors. Competition was a Porsche dealership that catered to the high-end racing enthusiast. One of those racers was 24-year-old Hollywood actor James Dean. Dean was not allowed to race while he was making movies, but several days earlier he had finished the filming of his third and what would turn out to be his final film role in Giant. He also recently had signed a big Hollywood contract which left him flush with cash so he came over here to competition and purchased his own race car, a Porsche 550 Spider, which was one of only about 70 that were ever made. On September 30th, 1955, which was a Friday, Dean brought the Spider over here from his home in Sherman Oaks. He brought it here to be tuned up for a race that he'd entered later that weekend in Salinas, California. The Porsche, which was nicknamed the Little Bastard, was a temperamental beast, and it took mechanic Rolf Biederich several hours to tune up to Dean's specifications. Around noon, the car was ready. Dean wanted to make it to Salinas by nightfall. The time trials were going to be the next day, and the big race was going to be on Sunday. Just before leaving, Dean was photographed sitting behind the wheel with his fists in the air, confidently vowing to win the race. From here, Dean and Viterich would travel up to Ventura Boulevard. They went west on Ventura and stopped briefly to get gasoline, another famous photograph. About a half an hour later, they would have been in the Santa Cruz Valley. The question is, did they stop there? Well, many people believe that they did. The story goes that he exited at the Saugus Road turnoff, now known as Magic Mountain Parkway, and pulled into a tips diner for a quick lunch. We may never know for certain if this actually happened, but we do know what happened next. Dean's little convoy was barreling down the far side of the grapevine when he stopped again, even though he hadn't planned to. I was going south on Highway 99, and I noticed this little Porsche Spider going north, and he was going too fast, I could tell that. So there was behind him a pickup truck pulling a trailer, and they were running together. I could tell the way that they were maintaining the distance between them. They were traveling together, so I made a U-turn. At that time, this wasn't a freeway, just a four-lane highway. So uh, I made a U-turn and dropped in behind them and uh, clocked them, and they were doing... Uh, around 70 miles an hour and uh, so I pulled both of them over and uh, both of them got out and we discussed uh, why I had stopped them. I told them why I had stopped them and they didn't have any argument because uh, it was obvious that they were running a little quick 
So I wrote him, and we, we sort of chatted a little bit while I was writing. He did not nothing at all that was... He didn't seem to be too unhappy, and he, of course, he wasn't all pleasant either. Nobody likes to get a citation, but uh, he certainly didn't uh, act polluted or, or anything like that. He was very pleasant, and the other guy was too. It was some friend of his that was driving the pickup, and I don't recall his name. And he was driving a trailer, or pulling a trailer, that should have had the car on it, the race car. But they were delayed in getting the car over, and they'd only got it over the day before, and he didn't have a chance to break it in. So instead of trailering it up to the races at Monterey, he was going to drive it up there and break it in on the way up. And that's what he was doing. He was actually pushing it too much, really. Now, I understand that you, you clocked him at roughly 70, right? right? around 70, yeah. But I think the ticket says 65? I think that's what I wrote him for. But that's not unusual. Uh, you always, if the guy's that far over, why, uh, you can always uh, pop the volume miles off of it and you know that you're going 65 or better because if you've got a good clock on him around 70, well, you know what he's doing. And uh, so it's not unusual at all. Do you remember what James Dean said specifically when you when you ticketed him? No, not not particularly. Uh, I didn't know who he was at the time. He was just another guy that I stopped for speeding. And uh, we chatted a little bit and I asked him where he was going with the car and he talked about, I'd heard about the race going to be at Monterey Ford Ord or something in that area. And uh, so we talked about the race and so forth, and he told me about the car getting in late, that he was going to go out to Riverside, and uh, he was going to take about a week or so and go out there and run it and get it loosened up good and get to where it felt comfortable driving it. And unfortunately, it just got in the day before, and so he didn't even have a chance to get it on the racetrack. So it's uh, really too bad that he didn't do that, and if it uh, taking it up there at Riverside like he planned, he probably wouldn't have been speeding up here. So it, it's very just an unfortunate, unfortunate circumstance, unfortunately, yeah. So you just gave him the, the clipboard and signed it, and, and so you got that autograph of, uh, of James yeah. Dean there? Oh, yeah. Now, I've seen a, a picture of that, uh, and they call it, the I think, the last autograph or, or whatever. Yeah, that's what I've heard. Now, do you have any copies of those? I, I had one, but I must have lost it. I tried to find it here a while back, and I couldn't. It, it's probably a pile of my junk that get bigger in the office all the time, you know. <laughs> but uh, I, I see it around a lot. A lot of wrestlers have them on the wall and have a picture, and they'll have a picture of the ticket right along with it. Uh, what was he wearing at the time? Do you remember? Oh, a typical Hollywood dress. Uh, he had an old pair of dirty beat up, worn out jeans, no belt on them. They used a, the Hollywood bunch then, they used a belt, I mean a rope where the belt should be on their pants. And they had shoes that were open and didn't know have any laces in his shoe so in his shoes. But that was typical Hollywood dress at that time. But uh, when I saw him, I thought, well, I, this guy got to be from Hollywood. But uh, a lot of the guys running around with their shoes on but no shoe laces and like I say, they, didn't wear a belt, but they'd put a rope around their belt loops and then tie the rope in front to keep their pants up. Well, do you think you could have done something more to convince him to slow down? I sort of doubt it. I, uh, I advised him or told him that uh, that was too fast to be running on the highway and uh, that he should slow down. I, I remember telling him to slow down and save your speed for the race up there and wished him good luck in the race. And uh, that was about it, but we didn't get anything technical order, and he certainly wasn't in blue or anything like that. He was just a very nice talking guy. After Dean made his unscheduled stop at the bottom of the grapevine, he headed on north on Route 99 and then west on 46. He made one final stop here at Blackwell's Corner. There were a lot of drivers going by on the 46 going to the same race. He recognized some of them. He stopped here. He chatted with a few. He uh, also chatted briefly with a, a young boy who liked the Porsche and, and uh, talked to Dean about it. Uh, he drank a Coke. Another person in his party had an apple. Then Rolf Viderich got in, shot guns. Dean got behind the wheel. And for the next 30 minutes, in the final 30 minutes of Dean's life, they spent it inside the, the Spider. Well, it was the uh, uh, evening of uh, September 30th. And uh, Ron and I had just reported for duty at the Pass Rolls Police Department. We had no CHP office at the time, 
and we were working the 6 p.m. to 2 a.m. shift. And oh, approximately 10 minutes to 6, a phone call came in from Paul Marino, the owner-operator of the Shalam garage, tow service, and ambulance, and cafe, uh, saying he'd had report of a bad accident at the intersection of 41 and 466, which is now 46. I jumped into told Ron he was outside there and I said I don't have anything to do I'll just follow you out there and assist you. He went to his car and I jumped in mine and we headed for the accident scene. We were probably doing 100 miles an hour. <laughs> Where we could. <laughs> to get there. So you came separately so you got to the crash site first right? How far behind were you? Right behind. Him. Right behind him okay. And what, what did you see when you got to the crash site? Well, I saw a couple of cars smashed up. First thing I did was put out the flares, and uh, Ernie started uh, talking to the people that around there to get some information. The only one I talked to was uh, Turnipseed, Donald Turnipseed, and then I uh, secured the scene so that uh, nobody would run into us and, and uh, then start taking pictures. What? How was how was Donald Turnipseed the, the driver of the other car? How was it, what shape was he in? He was, he was, seemed to be all right there. I think he hit his head on the windshield there, I'm not positive. No, yeah, he had minor he, uh, cuts and abrasions, but, uh, but he, he was, was ambulatory and yeah. got along all right. He didn't go in with the ambulance. James Dean was just there taking him from his car, getting him into the ambulance. He was still alive, but didn't look very promising because I thought he had a broken neck. And um, the other occupant of the car, the passenger, a mechanic from the Porsche factory in Germany, uh, Rolf Dieterich by name, uh, had been thrown from the car and uh, then he, he was transported, put in the ambulance and they both headed for the Paso Robles Hospital. So when you arrived, Dean was still alive? Yes. Mm -hmm. Not, he wasn't very alive, but he was still alive. Can you describe what, what he looked like at the time? I didn't see him, but I heard him. I could tell that it was very possible that he had brain damage because uh, the way he breathed, he breathed real heavy. Mom, a boy, a kid was killed tonight. <laughs> this is all going too fast you for me, You better give me something. You better give me something fast. Jimmy, you're very young. A foolish decision now could wreck your whole life. So now, at, at the time you you both arrived, uh, how, approximately how long after the crash uh, did you arrive? Do you think? Well, after the crash, I don't know because it took a little while for people from the crash to go to Marino okay. and stop. And so I would say we got there oh half hour probably after the crash. It was shortly after, sometime after six o'clock. Okay, so so it was still daylight. Oh yes, mm -hmm. but it was it was getting towards dusk. Okay, so you have turnip seed coming one way, and he's going to exit to the to the north there on the forty. Make a left turn on the left turn on the forty one. Yes. Go and have, east, and then you have uh, Dean coming from the other direction. What, what when you uh, you said there were other other witnesses? What, what did they tell you about uh, how it all came about? Well, Dean was coming down the hill. On, which was 466, now 46. And um, the turnip seed was making a left turn off of uh, 46 to make to go to Tulare because he was a student at Cal Poly and he was, he was going home for the weekend. And uh, it appeared to the witnesses that, that turnip seed did not see Dean because the color of the car was a silver gray color and it blended in with the background because it was it was getting close to uh, to uh, d dusk, and um, they just collided. I guess they've reconfigured it since then. Yeah, it's been re-engineered, and I don't know what their accident frequency is today, but I don't imagine it would be very much because I've driven that road many times, and it's, it looks like a, a pretty safe intersection.